Jessica, it is fantastic to chat with you. You've got quite a story to tell. And I'd love to start these, if we can, please, with a little bit of a, a scene setup. The Australian record, which I think still stands, you'll, you'll tell me if I haven't got that right, 500 mile an hour, 802.6 k's an hour. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. Just yeah, amazing. Good. Yeah. What's, uh, what's uh, it feel like on your body and things like that, Roscoe, and, and you know, controlling the machine at that sort of speed? I think the maximum G I think we went on that was about 3G, which to us, like drag racing, uh, you know, in the jets we go 5G, 5G, and when you put the two, two right, we have the cross fly shoots, when we put the shoots out, we go negative eight. So in drag racing, we've done up the three inch belts out of the big Simpson three inch bloody belts. You couldn't read them. We just done up that tight in them. And as soon as I popped those shoots, that stretch that much, I just about whacked my helmet on the on, on the on the steering wheel. They just you know, and then they go back and they'd be normal again. Like, Jesus, you know, you couldn't understand how how these seat belts would do it. But so the land speed car only would go probably three G at the most. And um, but the big thing with driving the car is so you're on this white player or you're on white salt lake with a black line put down it and a marker barrel every kilometre. So you had to know where you were on the track. There's no other way of knowing where you are. So a big number on the track. Because obviously, if you miss the finish line and you keep the power on, you'd, <laughs> you'd end up in warmer yeah. somewhere. So, um, yeah. yeah. But the thing is, you sit, you sit your bum in the car, car starts up, crew back away, take off, and I'm on comms with them all the way. But the bottom line is, you, you're looking over the curve to your earth. So when you, when you run in the car, or when I'm sitting in the car, I can see three barrels, and I'll just hit the top of the fifth one over, and you see the curve to earth go that way, and you see it go that way. Amazing. On the ball. And when I first started running, first few runs I do, I get out and think, holy shit, my neck hurts. And, um, and then we look at the onboard vision. I had a camera look, look at there, I'm lifting bum out the seat, and my helmet pressed up hard against the top of the roll code subconsciously, trying to look over the hill just to make sure there's no emus, or even though you've got spotters, but no emus or uh, kangaroos or something in the track. You know, it's really like driving a road car over a hill pretty fast. You know, no, one's, no one's over there. Yeah. Hill, think, yeah. You know, same scenario. So that's all the way you're, you're going over, over the curb to like that. And, um, and even the spectators, we say to people, it's not really a spectator sport. The Channel 7 came out there with us. But the amazing thing, even with those guys, was so they'd set, they'd set the cameras up at a predetermined spot and they, they'd hear me on the radio, OK, you've got start clearance, Aussie invaders rolling. And then someone would say, oh, there's a plume on the horizon there. They can see a plume. Next thing it turns into a black dot, there's a bigger black dot, next bigger, and then whoosh, next thing it's gone past. And then, Holy shit! You know, it's, that fast. That's fast. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So as I say, because of the curb, you hurt. They can't see it. So I'm, I'm down here running fast, and then they yeah, here, sort of thing. And yeah, anyway. I, I love the analogy. I love the analogy of, of it being like over the top of a ball, mate. That's a that's a great a great description. Can we complete? Um, if you're comfortable with it, by talking about you went back and and endeavoured to better that mark to, to chase a new record in, in Invader 2 and in many ways, mate, are you, am I right in saying that you're lucky to be here to tell the story today? Oh, well, in, in, my, uh, in my motor racing history, I've had a lot of, a lot of uh, thrills and spills and just so you understand how it happened, the front track of the car is narrow, a little bit narrower than the back and what actually happened is the front wheels punched through the salt and uh, as I say, we approached 600 mile hour on that run but broke through the the wheels broke through the salt, a lot of downforce in the front of the car, broke through the salt, then one of the rear wheels dropped into that track and the car just tramlined. And I was looking at the timing gear, possibly two mile away. And I thought, holy shit, this doesn't look too flash. I couldn't put a shoot out at that stage because it just would have torn off the car. So I just had to wait for the airspeed to slow us down and things get closer and closer on the chin. Here we go, bang, hit the chute, it held, hit the other chute and then ran over the timing gear and a timing marker went through the engine Killed this engine, big black plume out the back of the engine, and the noise it made when it hit—it's just absolutely mind-boggling. I got out of the car and I'm still alive. 